Hello, and welcome back to the IDG Corporate Update. Today, I'm delighted to welcome back Brian Firth, CEO of Gemina Labs. Brian, it's always great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Yolanda. So it has only been about a month since our last discussion, but I know you've had an exciting few weeks, including the signing of your first license agreement with a significant global diagnostics company. Congratulations, this is an incredible milestone. Thanks very much. Yes, it is quite a significant one for us, the first one. We have a pipeline coming of other license deals coming behind it, but um, it's always good to get the first one away. Absolutely. So I understand that the company who is licensing Gemini's technology is confidential, so I won't press you on that. But can you share a bit more about this agreement and what it means for the company? Yeah, so our license agreements, um, I think sort of in general, we... Um, we license out to players who are at the bigger end of the sort of diagnostic company at the moment. So our pipeline's mainly people that are doing sort of upwards of 300 million to 500 million um, tests a year. Um, so we have several in pipeline like that. This first one is in that category. Our sort of average, um, although this first one's in a particular area where the, um, the uh, antibodies are particularly cheap, the um, typically, uh, the average cost per test or revenue per test for us is about six cents. So, um, across the pipeline as a whole. So, you know, we're looking at a significant play. And now that our pipeline has about 25% of the world's lateral flow tests in it, um, then we're really quite happy to have got the first one away. So there is a specific way that Gemini Labs has addressed a critical challenge in the lateral flow testing that we are all very familiar with from our COVID-19 experience. Put a few drops of liquid on the cartridge, cross your fingers, and wait for those little lines to show up on the other end. How does your technology improve on these tests, and why are these improvements so valuable? So the way a lateral flow test works is um, you spray antibody onto the line, um, the test line and the test line is actually formed by whatever it is you're capturing flowing through a pad that picks up um, an antibody with a gold bead attached to it. And then as it flows down the line, the other side of whatever it is you're trying to capture the COVID virus in this case is captured by the antibody that's attached to the line. So you get a little sandwich that kind of goes antibody, um, the, the virus or the antigen you're trying to detect another antibody and then a gold bead. Gold beads shine pink, and that's why you get the pink line in the in the COVID tests. The problem when you spray antibody onto nitrocellulose, which is what um, all the substrate is for lack of flow tests, in an ideal world, you, all, you want it all standing upright with its hands in the air, a bit like a netball player or something. In reality, that doesn't happen. Only about 25% of your players are actually standing upright with their hands in the area. The other 75 to 85% are lying on the ground, they're upside down, they're facing in the wrong direction, etc. What Gemini chemistry does is it forces the antibodies to stand upright in the right direction. So you get many more that are able to catch the antigen coming through, and therefore you get a sensitivity increase, as it were, as a result. So you have the choice. You can either say, get the same sensitivity with less antibody or you can increase the sensitivity. And obviously you're not just testing for COVID. What is the scope of the different tests that this could apply to? So we provide that technology across all lateral flow tests. So um, so that particular, chem that particular chemistry will go into all lateral flow tests. Um, so we're not, it doesn't really matter what the test is for. We'll do everything from, you know, pregnancy to cancer to, you know, cardiology to, you know, COVID. Um, that's all possible. Anything that runs on a lateral flow test can use our chemistry. As you touched on, the market that you are addressing is quite significant. Uh, can you give us a picture of the size of the diagnostics market and what the opportunity is here for investors? Yeah, so the, the total sort of um, diagnostics market, what we call the in vitro diagnostics market, is about um, $97 billion. And a subset of that is actually the point of care diagnostic market. And point of care market is, that's the diagnostics that take place at the patient. So you take the sample, you run the diagnostic, and you give the result back while you're sitting with the patient. So that point of care market is worth about 43 billion. So it's not far off, it's just under half of the total IVD market. 
of that point of care market, you can really divide it up into three big chunks. There's about 11 billion of it is lateral flow tests, about eight to nine billion is molecular tests. That's things like um, LAMP and PCR that we also heard about during COVID. And the other sort of 23 billion odd is actually electrochemistry. That's all the sort of diabetes self-care products that you see, sort of the patches that people wear, the, you know, and that's by far the largest. So the within lateral flow, our addressable market is about 1.5 billion. So that's what our chemistry is worth in that marketplace, 1.5 out of 11 billion. In the molecular world, our chemistries, um, because we also have solutions in that world, um, it's about 1.9 billion of the 9 billion that makes up that marketplace. And we know there's opportunities in electrochemistry, but we haven't really had time yet to scale those. Oh, wow. Yes, that is certainly a very large market to address with your technology. Uh, Brian, before we wrap up, I just wanted to quickly touch on upcoming milestones with your first license agreement uh, with a big green check mark next to it. I would imagine building on that is your key focus going forward or what should investors be looking out for? Yeah, so investors would see sort of a number of things as doing things. One is you'll see us signing license deals on more customers. Um, the other thing you'll see us doing is publishing about um, different sample types. So how our technology improves sensitivity in different sample types. So we we were known for COVID because we did nasal swabbing. We were able to show we could get the same, same sensitivity as a nasal pharyngeal swab, but only using a sort of arterial nasal swabbing. Um, we've done the same for saliva. You'll see us doing the same for urine in the future and certainly bloods. So that will just, sort of deepen the proof that we've got that shows that actually chemistry works across all samples. Um, so you'll see us doing that. You'll see us altering, um, announcing new license deals, and then you'll probably see us saying a few things about new um, chemistries coming out for different areas, likes of molecular testing. So I understand you have a raise going on at the moment. Would you like to speak to that? Yeah, so we having signed the first license agreement and with more in the pipeline, we're going to have to build a new protein production facility. So we're um, raising money to do that. So we're raising about $5 million. Um, and um, we're going out to that in formally probably in the next four weeks. Very good. Okay, well, we'll leave it there. Brian, thank you so much for this update. That first big customer, as you say, is always the hardest. So uh, very excited to see how things progress for you over the next few months. No, thank you, Yolanda. Yeah, I look forward to speaking to you next time. Bye for now.